Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. taking the experience that VCE has done uh, for the B Block and uh, helping to, uh, in some ways they say, so, you know, so, taking solutions, almost productizing it some. Uh, so it, it, it's only appropriate uh, that we have uh, Don Norbeck, uh, who's Senior Director with the VCE Solutions Foundation, joining us for this first segment. Don, welcome back to theCUBE. Great, thank you, great to be here and see some good friends uh, that I haven't talked to in a, an old bit. Right. No, it's yeah, good to see so, you. Yeah, so, you know, since you're our first guest that we have on from VCE this week, uh, you know, Praveen, your CEO, was mm -hmm. uh, you know prominent in the keynote. Mm -hmm. you know, so tell us a little bit, you know, what, what's it like being back, you know, at VCE being inside of EMC? Uh, it's, it's been great. It's been a great experience um, uh, with the acquisition towards the end of last year. Uh, it's really kind of clarified our purpose. So if you think about what we've been doing over the last couple of years is converging this, the uh, infrastructure space. Uh, this movement allows us to do, an ex do that and extend that even further beyond uh, the four walls of what was known as a V-Block. You certainly saw a lot of the announcements. We'll see more of them uh, this week. Um, but it also allows us uh, to extend convergence up into the solution space by taking the practices that we've done of understanding the articulation of the infrastructure um, four corners and applying that to the, to the solution space by looking at how the solutions need to work together and interop. So it's been, it's been a, great, uh, a great transition uh, into, into EMC. Yeah, so Don, maybe we can talk about how does VCE go up the stack into the applications, because we want to talk about databases specifically. Mm -hmm. You know, why is the, the various solutions that you know, EMC and VCE, you know, what makes them special for Oracle? What kind of effort goes into you know, making the database work better, the infrastructure manage that? That's a, it's a great question. If you look at where we were in the past, we really had two models. The first model was either you do an appliance, where you go top to bottom, uh, integrate the stack all the way up. Yeah. And a la what, you know, a la Oracle's Red Stack. They bake the entire thing the whole I thing. buy it from one vendor, I know that they're going to say, if nothing works better for Oracle than Oracle. So. <laughs> Unless you need Oracle to work with anything else. Um, and then on the other side, uh, the other side of this, the options in the past were to go full general purpose and try and assemble it yourself. Now we've all in, in uh, VC and EMC have done a great uh, a lot of a great amount of uh, solutions work and a lot of efforts to uh, ensure that Oracle runs fast on EMC. Now, what we're trying to do at VC is to take the best of those both worlds. Instead of having a pure appliance or a pure do-it-yourself stack, we're converging the infrastructure pieces to make sure that we can determine which elements of those are appropriate for Oracle or for any database in that for that matter and then extend out into the solution space to make sure that the solution stack itself has its own interoperability matrices. Then we can test that interoperability matrix with our infrastructure inter interoperability matrix and give a golden alignment between the two. It's like the, the sphere of convergence is getting bigger and bigger, right? That's what you're Absolutely. What you're um, yeah. it's, moving, it's moving across different stacks within inside the infrastructure. You yeah. saw the announcements of the VX racks, and it's moving up the stack. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean we're just going to create a bunch of new appliances. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more than that. It's making sure that we have great knowledge around the appropriateness for each of those endpoints. Each of those different systems have different purposes, different configuration, different special bits mm -hmm. that make them appropriate for different solutions. So we have that full articulation we know how the solutions work, and we combine the two in a way that gives you guidance on which endpoints are best for which applications. Just, I mean, you know, when, when VC started live for the V-Block, you know, mm -hmm. one of the strengths, and sometimes people said a weakness, was the fact that it was quite uniform, and there were limited configurations, and I always thought that was a good thing, because variance <laughs> is a nightmare, right? Yes. And I guess, you know, one, one fear I'd, I'd love you to explore is, if you're adding more and more software, it's getting more and more complex. Um, so do you, I mean, is, is it going to be even harder for you to do this? You know, do you see any risks in doing that approach? Well, well I think we've learned over the last five years of how to um, make the systems work within a bounded set. What yeah. type of interoperability matrices we have to do, what type of non-reoccurring engineering investments we need to do uh, to make it work. Now we're taking that uh, example that proved the set and expanding it to a broader set of uh, infrastructure. So it's still the same quality assured. It's still the kind, same quality right? assured. But it, but when the customer gets it, it does more from day one kind of thing. It does more, it has more options from day one. Gotcha, all right. Okay, so gotcha. it's not just different options of, of different uh, hardware types or hardware configurations. Yeah. Um, it, it's also more options 
uh, once you establish a system. So we're, we're, we're not the in, in the appliance space where you, you sell a box and then you can't add anything to it, right. and you can't use it for anything else th than what the purpose you bought sometimes for. sometimes people think that, right? They, they think, they, I they buy this, this, this box that sits in the corner of the data center and I don't touch it. I don't think that's the case, is it? Th that, that's the case, we've, we've actually swung the pendulum almost to the other side. Oh, wow, when we okay. first started out, uh, when, when, when you and I were out there uh, talking about these things, <laughs> customers used to say, I want this to be a V block. Right. Yeah. And we say, oh, yeah, we can do that. I remember those days. Well. Um, now customers are coming to us and say, you know the infrastructure. You know the solution space. I want the best infrastructure for these purposes. Mm -hmm. Can you do that for me? Mm -hmm. Rather than telling me what DEAs I want. So which, kind uh, of they ask for an want. outcome and you... They want, right, yes. I mean, that was one of the key messages this morning. Did you hear that loud and cloud today? Oh, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> we always say, you know, we're tired of hearing some of the speeds and feeds on that. Yeah. Me, you know, how do I move my business faster? How do I yeah. turn IT into an enabler for business? Um, so there were a bunch of new announcements, Don. Can you walk us through what you know the, the, the new announcement means specifically for the database uh, environment? Well, I, I'll focus it uh, back on, on, on the database. For, for database, really what it means is now we have a great line of systems from the 300 series uh, based on VNX, to the 500 series based on Extreme IO, uh, to the 700 series based on uh, VMAX. We also have uh, a new scale-out architecture that will be applicable for certain database uh, environments. Mm -hmm. um, and those database environments, you know, databases are going to go through this transformation too, yeah. where you can have more scale-out mm -hmm. um, than, uh, than monolithic architectures. Okay. Yeah. And so, we so are, are we well positioned Some of the that. like modern NoSQL databases, or what, what, what can you dig into us a little bit? So it, it, it's, it, I'll, I'll take it from, from where we are today. Uh, over 50% of our V-blocks that we go out to market with and in our customers' environments are you, use Oracle as a database wow, uh, workload. So now, many of them are in a mixed workload environment where you have Oracle next to, next to a, a SQL application, next to Exchange, next to something else. Um, but there are some that it is a dedicated environment where we are building the supercar. Yeah. And we're building that, uh, that, that, that infrastructure that hums at millions of IOPS. Yeah. Uh, and we have balanced the, the, the two of them. These new announcements that we have gives us more uh, starting points mm -hmm. from smaller sized infrastructure to more uh, feature capabilities that would wouldn't paint you into a corner that you could only use it for a database or only use it for a flavor of the database uh, in the future. Yeah. You'd be able to, um, because we know what the endpoints look like, we can give you guidance on what other solutions it would be appropriate for. How is that going to affect things like, um, you know, vision? Because vision. I mean, I, I remember being so excited about that when, when I was at VCE because, you know, it's like the old adage, you know, if you've still got 13 element la managers, it doesn't look like a block, right? If you can get <laughs> that, one, that one view, that's brilliant. If you're expanding that by adding more and more software, I guess that problem gets more difficult as well, doesn't it? Uh, it, it does and it doesn't. Um, it, it does, it is, it, is a, it, is, it is some brute force to make sure that you can have the, the, date, the depth of information on all the different uh, components and all the different systems. That's something that we will continue to invest in and continue to uh, expand upon. But where it makes a, a difference in, for us is it gives you that data center view across all the infrastructure that you have. Okay. So whether it's a, a VX rack or a VX block or a V block, you get to get the visibility from an from a inventory, a health and compliance perspective. Yeah. So Don, a question I have for you, when I think back to database, <laughs> you know, one of the questions we've had for many years is, you know, do I virtualize or do I do bare metal? Mm -hmm. And I remember talking with VCE <laughs> in the early days, you know, People forget that even though you know VMware, of course, is on like every vBlock that ships, mm -hmm. um, you can do physical uh, with the vBlock. And Absolutely. now even with the VX rack, it was one of the key differentiators that I see mm -hmm. is, as far as I know, it's the it's the only hyper-converged platform built with Scale I/O mm -hmm. that can do bare metal. All the rest of them, it's either in the hypervisor or on the hypervisor, but you've got to have a hypervisor. Where, where, where are we with kind of the database discussion? How much is physical? How much is virtual? You know, what's that playing out in the customer seat? A great, great, excellent question. I, I still think that the, uh, physical has a huge play mm -hmm. um, in, in the database space. Uh, and, and having infrastructures that have the options to support it from a physical, um, as you make the investments to modernize your applications, some, some uh, databases will just run better uh, physically and, and don't have the compelling event to virtualize. Mm -hmm. Now, we would inc strongly encourage, because you do get other benefits in, in terms of uh, operational uh, benefits as well as uh, availability benefits, um, but t the value of VCE and, and our CI is the ability to support both of them to allow customers mature at their own pace rather than forcing them to virtualize up front or forcing them into a uh, stay with the, uh, the physical approach. Mm -hmm. Right.
So, Don, uh, we're, we're running low on time here. Uh, what, what I want to ask you is, you know, what about the kind of the, the operational side of things? It's, is, it, is the DBA still driving a lot of the infrastructure for there? And, and how has that role uh, been changing over the last couple of years? Well, if you remember, I think uh, EMC and VC uh, sponsored a study uh, with Wikibon uh, late last year, uh, where that, you know, and keep me honest with the numbers, but about 50% of the time of a DBA was spent mucking around in the plumbing. <laughs> now, why they had to do it is because every time they adjusted something up in the application, it, it, it caused a hole down in the plumbing that needed to be adjusted. Um, data sets needed to move from one class of storage to another class of storage. What if you can get the plumbing right day one? That can free up a substantial amount of time from an operation perspective for that DBA to go and really deliver the value to the business, which is in the data sets, which is in the organization of, of the, uh, the, the development of the applications, and making sure that those two things work together. You don't want DBAs playing in command lines of the infrastructure. You want them playing in um, inside their application space. And I think that what we bring to the table from VC helps minimize the time they have to spend making the infrastructure appropriate. It comes out of the factory appropriate for that application. All right, well Don, appreciate so much all the updates you brought. Uh, we will be covering lots more of the Oracle space and lots of the other applications. Uh, so stay with us, we'll be right back. Great. Ooh, thank you. Thanks, Don. Good job. Real good stuff. Hey, great job. Yeah, thank you. Helps around the stuff. Yeah.